Oh, hi! This week, it's finally happening. We're making a gathered skirt. I'm gonna show you how I've made the past like three or four. Have I made five? I've maybe made five of these and they're my favorite and I want one in every fabric that I have in the shop. The time it will take me to explain it will probably make it seem like it's more difficult and more involved, but we're also gonna be drafting a pattern as part of this and I'm gonna show you how to add pockets and like do the gathering stitches. So it's gonna be a little bit more involved, more comprehensive than I sometimes get with some of my other videos, but I promise that it is really easy. It's just there's a lot of like little chunks of the process that I want to make sure you understand how to do. And I think to keep this video as useful as possible, I'll break it down into the different sections. So if you're watching this back later and just want to double check like how the waistband goes together. All right. As I said, you've totally got this. It's going to be much easier than it seems. So I think I'll just explain the math and measurements and get us through the pattern first. And then I will show you the actual supplies I have and the fabric I'm using, which I'm so excited about. For the pattern, you need paper. I just had some newsprint lying around. This may be a two pot of coffee type of day. Other than paper, you're going to need some marking tools, some scissors, something to measure yourself with. I can't tell you how helpful like clear gridded rulers are. And as for measurements, you just need around your waist, the smallest part. So this is your high waist. If you take an elastic and wrap it around your waist and do some like flexing and moving around, it's going to fall at your natural waist. And for me, I often have a tank top with a t-shirt tucked into the waistband of my skirts. So I'm measuring around that. You don't want it to be too tight that it's uncomfortable, but you don't want there to be any slack really. I'm right at 31. Here I am making note of that, 31 inch waist. Now for a fitted waistband like this, where there's no elasticity to it, you want to add what's called ease. This is a term I just recently learned about where I would have just considered it extra wiggle room because you know quarantine weight has happened but also like you want to be comfortable while wearing your shit at least I do comfort and utility over the look and sometimes I'll sacrifice a little bit of comfort if it's like a real good outfit but it's so rare that that happens and pretty much only for weddings plus like my weight fluctuates I feel like that's the case with a lot of people and it's okay to make you know a variety of sizes of skirt as well I have some skirts that I made a few years ago that are you know a little bit more on the snug side like the ease has pretty much been used up. So I always make a point to remeasure my waist every time I go to make something or take any of my measurements just because it makes it more accurate, at least for that point in time. And generally speaking, whenever I'm making the thing is when I'm most excited about wearing the thing. So I'm more likely to wear it then. So like, why not make it for that current body? I'll get off my soapbox. So I'm going to add half an inch to an inch and a half of ease. Again, depends on how much you tend to fluctuate. I'm just gonna add a whole inch to mine. So that brings us up to 32. And then we need to account for seam allowance. So this is gonna be one whole piece that wraps around and meets right at the center back. I am here for back center zippers because this gathered skirt that I made this was the first one I ever did and it has a side zip and it's an invisible zipper which if I ever get an invisible zipper foot I won't mind putting them in but not in a side seam because more important than pretty much anything else for me these days is that shit has pockets and having this hit the top of the pocket it was such pain in the ass to sew it means I have less room to have the zipper open to even get into the skirt and it's it's just a nightmare. So I do not recommend side zippers. Do whatever your preference is. The waistband can stop at whatever point you want, but I am putting it in the back. <laughs> so most of the time for seam allowance, I give myself about half an inch. A lot of commercial patterns, it's five eighths of an inch, which is just over half an inch. Do, do whatever you want. But when I'm inserting a zipper, which this will have going into it, we're not fucking with any top snaps. The zipper is going to go right to the top of the waistband and then go down into the skirt. I like to give myself a solid inch. So we're going to have an inch at each end of the waistband. For the waistband height, this is all a matter of preference, as is everything in life. The one on this TARDIS skirt is one and three quarters of an inch tall. And that's about as high as I want it to go. We're also gonna need to account for seam allowance up at the top, because we're gonna do the waistband in two pieces. And then we'll need seam allowance where this attaches to the gathering down here. When I'm doing a gathered skirt waistband, probably any waistband I'd imagine, I like to give myself extra seam allowance for this part, I like having more wiggle room there. So I'm gonna call it three quarters of an inch seam allowance for the bottom here. So to get this finished height of one and three quarters inch, I'm gonna add half an inch up top for seam allowance and then that extra seam allowance, three quarters of an inch. So total measurement for the height, 
three inches. I almost held up the wrong number of fingers there. So here's a little breakdown. I will be putting all of my notes in, you know, a little, little chart of the pattern I'm putting together. And then I will put a picture of this up on my Patreon page. You do not even have to be donating to access it. I'll just have it available for you to check out so you can have more references on how I broke everything down. I mean, you're more than welcome to join the crew over at my Patreon. It's very fun over there. We have a Discord where we all hang out and some of the tiers get gifts sent out to them, which I just put in the mail yesterday for May and I'm really excited to see what everyone thinks of their stuff. Especially Chris. I'm really, really proud of what I made you. <laughs> I hope you like it because I think it's neat and I hope you also think it's neat. Anyways, yes, three by 34 inches. I have my pattern piece in half because I'm just going to cut it out on folds. Waistband measurement done. Okay, now we need the one other measurement we're going to need, which is going to be total length of the skirt. So you're going to go from your waist down to wherever you want it to hit. I don't want it to like quite hit my knee. So I want the finish length to be 20 inches, we'll call it. So 20 inch length plus hem allowance, which I like to do at least half an inch. I tend to account for about an inch though. So we'll call that 21 inches. Now here's where floofiness preferences come in. For this skirt, I've already made. It has floof. Your hands can kind of disappear into the pockets, but it's not like cupcake situation. To achieve that amount of fullness, the width measurements of the front and back skirt pieces are one and a half times the width of my waist. So to make the numbers easier, let's call my waist 30. The front piece and the back piece are each 45 inches wide. You're just adding an additional half of your waist measurement on top of your waist measurement. That's like optimal floof for me. I don't want anything bigger, but if you wanna go full cupcake, Kaylee Fry level shit, you absolutely go for it. As far as making the floofiness less, you just have to make sure it's bigger than your hip measurement. For me, that's 41 inches and you're measuring around your biggest part because you gotta get that skirt up over dead ass. Plus the seam allowance, because we will be sewing this together at the side seams. Oh yeah, and the difference between the front is that gets cut on fold, but the back pieces, which are the same pattern because it's half of the front, just the front gets cut on folds, is that the back pieces are gonna be two separate ones because they get sewn at the side seams and the zipper inserted in the back where the front is like one big section. Good grief, I hope this is making sense and I'm catching any little things that I might get hung up on if I was watching a video like this. Let me sketch out those measurements on here. And again, I'll have it up on my Patreon if you want like a better visual instead of me very blurrily holding it up to the screen. So if this makes any more sense, front panel is getting cut on fold. I did try to film this a couple nights ago, but I was drinking and like, you can only imagine how not well that went. I immediately deleted all of that footage. And then yeah, so that's for the front is getting cut on fold. And then I'm gonna lay that same pattern piece down for the back pieces is just not getting cut on fold. It's getting cut as two separate pieces and I'm just adding that seam allowance when I cut it out. Feel free to make separate pieces. Just make that back piece a little bit wider, basically. And you've got a fucking gathered skirt pattern. You did it. The only other pattern piece you need, I have so many different patterns that have pocket patterns in them though. Lots of commercial outfits do. Honestly, if you just trace around your hand pointed downward, it's gonna look like a mitten without a thumb. This is actually too small for me, so I don't even use this pattern directly. I go way around it. Okay, now it's fabric cutting time. I'm so excited. So here's what you need for materials for the project is sewing machine, matching thread, scissors, pins, rulers. I'm inserting a zipper. This one's only seven inches and that does the trick for me, but if you want it to be longer, it will make it easier to get in and out of. I wouldn't go any shorter than seven inches. Some kind of fabric. I don't like when it's real drapey when it's gathered because you kind of lose the volume. I'm just using some quilting cotton. I'm going to get my iron out and ironing board and press all this nice and non wrinkly because it's just been sitting in a mound since my sister gave it to me. By the way, thanks Jenny for all this fabric. I can't wait to make the skirt, but you're also going to need the iron to like make the skirt look nice. I'm also using some similar weight gray fabric for the pockets, but feel free to use the same fabric if you have enough. I'm also going to use my serger for this just to make the edges look really nice, but it's non-essential. Oh, and you're also going to need some interfacing. This is a featherweight interfacing. We're just going to need it for one side 
of the waistband because remember we're cutting out two waistband pieces because one is going to like self line the other one. You can also pick a contrasting fabric for that. I'd say anything light to medium weight interfacing wise should be fine. I wouldn't go too too stiff. Comfort is the priority here. I should have heated my iron up during that whole tirade. Oh cool it wasn't recording that whole time. I burnt my leg is what I was trying to explain. I took a break after I patterned and ironed all this stuff and just enjoyed the sun, did a live stream. Now we're on to cutting everything out and like prepping the fabric. This is folded over once so I have two layers of fabric here and honestly my cutting mat is not wide enough for doing this all the way across so I'm just gonna fold this in a little bit so I can get a nice clean cut in one swipe. Obviously use scissors, draw lines, do whatever you gotta do. This is just gonna be the quickest way. So here is my front piece. I'm gonna cut the waistband out. Super almost fucked up. I need to make sure this is on fold. So that is one waistband piece. And I need one more to do the facing on the inside. We could have folded this over and cut both at the same time. That would have been smart. All right, there's our second waistband piece. Okay, now to cut the back pieces. The only difference here is I'm going to cut it into two pieces instead of keeping it on fold in one length. Find I get a straighter line and save more of the fabric when I just cut off a little bit with the rotary cutter. And now, okay, just to recap, I have two of the squares for the back, one double wide rectangle for the front and then two of the narrower strips for the waistband. The only thing left are the pockets and I'm going to move back up to the table to do those because they're small. Okay for the pocket pieces I'm going to quadruple up my contrast fabric. The direction doesn't matter so much here and here's a little like sneaky tip for why I like to do pockets out of more of a solid color if I'm doing a wild print on the outside is because it has happened where I cut the pockets out where it was like three facing one way and one facing the other and I had to waste you know so much material. Not that it's a huge pattern piece but this fabric there's no wrong or right side to it. It looks the same either way. So if I fucked it up in the same way it would be a complete non-issue. did a terrible job ironing this. Are we surprised? Of course we're not. Yeah perfect. Okay like I said I want to trace this a little bigger. I'm just gonna loosely go around this with a rotary cutter. Now I have four duplicate layers and it doesn't matter what way they're facing. We can get that out of the way, get the pattern out of the way. I'm gonna heat my iron up again while I cut this last piece out, which is the interfacing. So I have a lot of yardage of this interfacing so I can do it all in one piece. So I'm gonna lay my facing piece on top of here or your pattern if you still have it out that's fine. There's not supposed to be any stretch to it so I don't think it matters the direction. And here's a trick right because you don't need to interface the seam allowance. If you have your fabric lined up to the corner like this and you shimmy it down say quarter inch or whatever your seam allowance is you can save you know that much interfacing up this way for later projects. It's just a good way to preserve as much as you can. So I have this piece folded, I have this folded. So the fold is here. I'm not cutting two separate pieces. Although if you do just overlap them a bit when you iron the interfacing on, it's not the end of the world. Fold your waistband fabric more neatly than me so you don't actually shave little bits off. And now we have an interfacing piece that's a little bit smaller than this waistband. Now that the iron is heating up, let's go to the ironing board and apply the interfacing to the wrong side of the fabric. I'm gonna take my facing. I'm just gonna press it out really well because there are still a couple wrinkles. It's also good to like heat up the surface you're applying the interfacing to. Makes for a cleaner job. Definitely just burnt my own fingertips. I know, the iron is dirty. I say it every time and then do nothing about it. I have this glue side down. You can tell it's the glue side because there's like little beads on it. The other upside to cutting the interfacing a little bit smaller too is you don't risk getting glue on your ironing board or if you have this facing up like with the fabric facing down and that's the surface you're ironing on you're not getting any of the glue on your iron. I'm not burning anything but I am melting. Okay that's what we want. If you're not used to ironing something always like ease your way into it. If I like run this back and forth I tend to get puckering so if I just like push down and let it melt the glue and apply you know some pressure to make sure it's it's really attaching to the fabric. I have great success. It's been long enough since that movie came out that I am finding references to it funny again and I don't know what that says about me. All right 
that actually looks pretty good. This is nice and crisp, but not too stiff. There's still plenty of pliability here. Just for security, I'm gonna go over on the fabric side. And again, not move it back and forth, just kind of push down. You can hold it down a little longer on the fabric side. I am applying some pressure. I don't know if you can hear the ironing board creaking. And now I can't see the beads anymore. It's nice and smooth. Another good way to check it's adhered properly is just like run your fingernails along the edge. And while I have all this out, I am gonna go back over all of the fabric. I am the first person to complain about ironing things and I used to not iron anything. I have to say it is the single biggest improvement in my sewing is pressing stuff out as I go. Okay, now I have a bunch of edges I'm going to serge. Not everyone has a serger and I'm not gonna assemble any of this until tomorrow because I'm getting tired and my shoulder hurts and I need to make some pizza because God damn it, I want pizza. And I feel like this will be a good stopping point and we can start fresh. I can feel myself losing focus a little bit. If any of you were screaming at me for not cutting off the selvages, it is to kind of dummy proof this part for myself because these are almost square pieces. And I know that I'm using the selvages as the side seams and the back seam. And I didn't want to accidentally have it go the opposite direction. Plus like if I'm serging an edge anyway, why not wait to cut something like this off until the serging process? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna serge what will be the side seams and center back seams of both back pieces, both side seams of the front panel. We're gonna leave the uninterfaced waistband piece, so the outer piece alone, but we're going to serge the bottom edge, whatever I decide that is, but one of the long edges of the facing waistband piece, so the one we just added the interfacing to. And then for the pockets, I'm gonna serge all around each piece, so straight edge, and along here. Oh, before we speed through this, if you're finding that serging a single layer is starting to like bunch up and it's almost gathering on itself, once you're able to grab the back of it, give yourself some space between pieces you're serging. Just pull from behind, not too hard, but just to keep the threads taut. And that should keep it going through smoothly, where if I don't touch it and I just push it through like this, See, it gets, it gets all bunchy. But if you have that slack around the back, you can kind of pull that gathering out and it'll lay flush. Ta-da! Okay, let's zoom through these motherfuckers. All right, not only are we done the prepping shit and are ready to attach the pockets and then get into the assembly, I'm already using the little thread snip sheath that I made for my video from last week that I posted on the first. So I'll put a little card if I remember, if I'm notorious for not remembering that. Super handy for little stuff like that, where if I had it on the table, moving all this fabric around, it would have fallen onto the dog or something. And yeah, this is, this is great. Oh, hi, we're here, it's day two. Okay, we are going to get into the pockets. If you don't need this part, just go to the next timestamp for putting the pockets in. We'll start with the front piece, just because it'll be a little easier to show you. All right, so first step is just deciding what long end you want to be on the top. Again, if you have directional fabric, it's gonna tell you anyway. There's gonna be gathers. I don't, I don't know that it matters which side. So we'll just call this the top. Now we just gotta figure out how far down we want the pocket to start. On the other one, I really like the height of the pocket. It suits me is having it two inches down from the very top. Also keep in mind, you have to account for seam allowance. So if nothing else, just make sure it's starting at least like half an inch down, but I'm gonna measure two inches, put a pin there, and same thing on this side, measure down two inches and put a pin there. If you don't wanna measure every time, once you have your first pin in, you can just fold your fabric in half and line up the seams and just put your pin in the same spot. You're gonna wanna do this for the back pieces as well. So just pick the right side of one of the back panels and then the left side of the other back panel because you don't want two lefts. Try to be cognizant of which one's your back seam and which one is your side seam. So that is the trick, isn't it? Is that they're the exact fucking same. And then right sides together, I'm gonna take the pocket here. So like the top of it, you're gonna take the top of the pocket. <laughs> I'm gonna call it half an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna put the pocket about half an inch up from where that pin is and then pin through both layers. And I'm gonna toss a pin at the bottom. All right, now that we have our pockets pinned at the right height at all four side seams of the skirt pieces, I'm just gonna do a straight stitch, just one pocket to one skirt piece. I'm gonna go half an inch in 
and just stitch from the top to the bottom of the pocket and do that for all four pocket pieces. All right, we got the nice side seam here. Okay, now we're gonna press these before we attach them to their respective partners. And I promise this is so, 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 so important. I hate it. I hate how important it is. So I'm gonna press this flat and push the seam allowance towards the pocket. I like to pull on the seam a little bit so it's gonna lay super flat. And look at that versus this. It's real like bulbous and it doesn't want to like go one direction or the other and do that for all four. Okay, everything's pressed out. I'm gonna lay my big front piece down because there's no risk of accidentally putting two incorrect sides together. I'm gonna take the corresponding back piece. So when I put them right sides together, it should be like a little elephant ear hanging off these side seams here. I'm gonna line them up real nice and they should just lay on top of each other like this pin liberally and getting into the actual skirt construction now. So once you stitch down this side seam, we're gonna do it all in one shot. We're gonna start here, curve around and go down and that's your pocket, your pocket's in. They're not as much of a pain in the ass as you think they are. You just have to have the iron, like you want them to look nice. And it's also for the utility, like they're gonna point inside the skirt if you press them out and take the time to do that. Here we are at what is this, phase three? Phase four, assembling the skirt. So if you skip the whole part about the pocket and you're not adding them, just ignore this little flappy bit here. Everyone that wants pockets, you know the deal because I just went over it. If you don't have them, you're just doing one straight shot down the front and back side seams and attaching them together, right sides together at the left side and then repeat same steps at the right side. So you should be connecting three different pieces at two different points. All right, y'all, now we got a forever long strip. <laughs> You're basically gonna have to get used to pressing every seam after you do it. For example, now that I have the side seams stitched together, I'm gonna press it so the seam allowance is towards the front. And if you have pockets, that's gonna help it lay towards the front. You're not ramming your hand at your side and like accidentally hitting your own ass. I mean, hey, if you're into that kind of thing, that's fine. Okay, look at those beautifully pressed seams. They're all going towards the front. Normally you'd go towards the back, but we got pockets because that, that is an essential item here. All right, now I'm gonna break my serger out again and I'm gonna serge along the entire bottom edge of this just cause it's gonna make hemming easier down the road. And if there's like a slight discrepancy in the length because you're bad at cutting things, then that'll even it out. And uh, I'm just gonna make sure that the side seams are going the direction that I pressed them. And that's a broken needle. I barely got into this. It looks like the left needle fell out, got caught in the threads, tucked under the right needle and broke the tip on that. Thankfully, it wasn't too aggressive of a noise. Sometimes when you break a needle, you're like, fuck, am I gonna die or go blind? Let's, uh, let's shut this off before we take things apart. E okay, that took uh, a little bit more effort and time than I thought it was going to. But hey, we got our bottom edge surged. I just had a second of panic because I thought I did the wrong edge. So next, we're gonna do the gathering stitches. It's the easiest thing in the world, I promise. It's just really tedious. One big tip, my biggest tip I can give you, make sure you have full bobbin before you even start because if you stop halfway through and you run out, you have to start over again and it's infuriating. Also, most of my thread is this width, but I randomly have this one bobbin. It's definitely a bobbin for my machine. I don't know where the thread came from, but it's a little chunkier than this one. So I'm gonna load this into my bobbin and then that's gonna be the thread I pull on. It, it makes it so much simpler when you have a slightly thicker thread. It's fine if you only have one weight of thread. It's still doable. That's how I did all the other gathered skirts. I'm gonna start a gathering stitch, one of two. Some people say do three. Some people do it by hand with like one super thick piece of thread. What, whatever gets you through, this is the way I like to do it. When I finally attach this to the waistband, I'm going to do a half inch seam allowance. So the only thing you need to keep in mind for positioning for the gathering stitches is to make sure it is just above and just below your regular seam allowance because you don't want the threads to get caught because it's going to be a bitch to pull out if you cross over them. So the first row I'm going to do right around a quarter of an inch and then the second row I'm going to do will be a half inch down from there. So about three quarters of an inch from the edge. So it's going to give like a little channel for the half inch seam allowance to go. And yeah, I'm just going to do one continuous row, no back stitching. You also want to make sure you pull your threads out of your machine a little bit. Whoops, I already fucked up. <laughs> you also want to make sure you get a straight stitch going and then you switch to the longest possible stitch length. 
I had mine set at the two that I've been using and now I got to go back and unpick it because that's not going to fly. But hey, I caught it early. I'm just making sure I'm still pulling extra slack out before I restart this. Red is set properly. Okay, let's fucking go. Oakley dokley. As you can see, I have my bobbin thread side by side, little train tracks, and then I have my top thread here. It doesn't matter what side either sets of threads are on as long as both rows of the thicker thread are on the bottom. So just pick whatever direction and just make sure you're sewing them side by side from the same side. Okay, so now what I like to do is go mentally back to the beginning of this project when we got our waist measurement and how wide the waistband is going to be, which is for me the 34 inches. And that is what we are going to scrunch this entire length to is 34 inches. So it's gonna take a little bit of doing. Make sure you're only pulling threads from the same side. And now I'm gonna pull both of these at the same time. You don't wanna be pulling this more than this one. You wanna hold them both together. And we're basically ignoring these threads on the other side. So you wanna keep them long, but keep them out of the way. And then we begin gathering. You're probably gonna need more than you think. And for me, I like to do more gathers and then just take them out after the fact. So here's the thing, right? It's all gonna start bunching at this first end, but you just gotta keep moving it down the line. Cause you gotta keep in mind, you're gathering the entire length of this whole top edge. And that's what 80 something inches for mine. And this is why I think people get intimidated by gathers cause they don't go quickly. I'm pulling on strings It's not hard. I don't find it hard. I don't want to minimize anybody that struggles with this. I would really like to take the fear out of techniques like this because they're so useful and they have such a cool effect. For me, honestly, the texture of this, like touching the gathers and having to run them over, it's a very like pleasing tactile experience. There's something very soothing about this for me. So maybe I wanted to do this just to quell some of my anxiety these days. Oh, also I'm right around the halfway mark of the front panel of the skirt. I have the rest of this side gathered, but I still have the center front and the whole other side here. You can absolutely pull from the other side, but just make sure if you're pulling your bobbin threads on the first side, you're also only pulling your bobbin threads on this side. So for me, I'm also making sure I'm only grabbing the yellow threads and just letting these gray ones hang and then everything can meet in the middle. Because the further away from like the edge of the fabric you are and you're trying to push gathers down, it is more difficult. So yes, working both sides towards the middle, totally cool. All right, this is what I got. All that fabric bunched just into this little thing. But look at that floof. Oh, it's gonna be so good. So yeah, I'm gonna start from that center spot and just spread these out a little bit. You don't wanna snap any of the threads. Play around with it. Take your time with this. Try to make them even. Don't have one part that's like really tightly bunched right next to a pretty flat part. Don't have any gathers within the seam allowance. So remember, this is the back center seam where the zipper is gonna go. So I need a full inch over here and I don't want any gatherings there. Okay, so I got my gathers to I think a pretty reasonable length. I just have it lined up to the waistband. And by reasonable length, I mean it's the same length as my waistband. So now I marked, and by marked I mean pinned. Damn, I told myself I was gonna take today off and I managed to fill a 32 gigabyte memory card with footage today. That is wild. All right, well, I'm definitely gonna stop after this step then. So as I harped on before, I've got two rows of gathers and I'm just gonna stitch right between them. I'm gonna switch this back to a small stitch length. No zigzagging shit or anything. I'm gonna switch back to a matching bobbin. Then we're gonna have our gathers done, baby. Also, I bet your ass, I bet my ass, you bet your ass. 95% of the time lapses I've been doing won't actually be usable footage because my shoulder is gonna be in the way because I am just forever crouching in front of the sewing machine when I'm trying to get these angles. I don't have a camera guy. It's just me, man. <laughs> Bert doesn't have opposable thumbs, so he is not helpful in this scenario. All right, you can see there's three rows of stitching now, and we just want that center one. Before I pull anything out, I'm gonna flip to the outside. Just want to make sure that, like, nothing's sticking out, everything got caught correctly, so I make sure it's looking nice. And also that, like, the gathering does look even from this side. All right, I think we're business. And this can take a while. If it doesn't come out cleanly, you're just gonna have to sit with it for a while and work at it. I'm just gonna start pulling this thread, whichever thread is giving you an easier time is the one you should go with. For me, the yellow ones are stronger and those are the ones I pulled on to do the gathers in the first place. That's the first one I'm gonna try. 
and it seems to be going all right. If this works, it's the most satisfying thing in the world when you pull it all out at once and you wanna pull, keep it taut, but not snap it. Fine line to walk there, I know. Let it still be fun. Don't put so much pressure on yourself for it to be exactly perfect the first time. <gasps> but, ah, oh, yes. So that's all that. And now when I go to the underside, that gray thread that was stitched as the top thread for that bobbin string I just pulled out, now that's gonna come right out. Nothing holding it in place. And now, and actually this top one, cause it's hidden away, you can't see it from the outside isn't expressly essential to pull out. I don't know, I just kind of like doing this part. And I am gonna call it there. I need some lunch and chill for a bit. It is once again, a too fucking nice to sit inside. Okay, we're on day three of this. As I keep saying, once you have the pattern down and you aren't trying to film the process of making this and explain all the steps to people, it goes pretty quick. Like I can have this done in an afternoon. And if you're like, hey, you got too much sun. I, I know, I, I regret my decisions. Anyways. Now we're going to attach the rest of the waistband. I'm gonna line up the unsurged edge. So the top of the facing, I'm gonna line up with the top of the already existing band like this. And I'm gonna do just regular straight stitch, standard seam allowance all the way down, lining up my center notches, small stitch size, starting off nice and easy today. So now here's our like gathered edge. Here's our front piece of the waistband and here's our facing for the waistband. Okay, so now I'm going to press the seam allowance towards the front waistband. Actually, I'm gonna do that with the gathers, though they're kind of naturally doing that anyway. So basically both sets of seam allowance that this middle band is touching, you want it to go towards that middle band because this is gonna fold this way and yeah, you want the gathers to stick up into it. Look at how nice and crisp that shit is. Next up is I'm gonna sew the back seam closed. I'm gonna take my zipper. I'm gonna line it up with this like middle seam that's attaching the two bands together. I want this top metal stop to be like a quarter of an inch maybe below this seam where the two waistbands are attached to each other so that when it folds over, it's pretty much right at the top. So let's call it a quarter inch down, keeping that in mind. I kind of run my fingers along one of these back seams and see where this zipper stop ends. I'm gonna put a pin right there through both layers. Now from the top here, I'm gonna do a basting stitch. So the longest stitch that I have all the way down to where that pin is, I'm gonna do a little bit of back tacking and then I'm gonna do normal stitch length. So switch it down to like two and a half or what, whatever you want it to be for the rest and go all the way down to the bottom of the back of the skirt. So the whole thing's gonna be closed. Just the top half is gonna have much looser stitch. And also three quarters to an inch seam allowance for me is gonna, is gonna do it. Okay, so the back is closed. I'm going to open up those seams or that that one seam, we just did the one, didn't we? And then I'm gonna press this seam allowance flat all the way up to the tippy top. It's zipper time, my dudes. As we discussed, I'm going to line up this little top metal nubbin quarter of an inch below this stitch line here where the two waistband pieces are meeting. And I'm gonna have the teeth just along that center seam so that each side is gonna smooch a little in the middle. Get what I'm saying? All right, so let's pin just because I want this to look as nice as possible. I'm going to follow the advice of a bunch of you and baste this down. I have also usually unpicked the basting here once the seam allowance is pressed and then put the zipper in, which like if I'm already basting it closed, why not have the nicer finish and make it easier on myself while keeping the seams together and then unpick it at the end. I don't know why I've always done that. Okay, my zipper's basted in. I'm really glad I did that. Also, it's not that time consuming. That was like two minutes. Plus I already had threaded needles. I'm gonna go over this with a small stitch from the top, I think. I will have to keep in mind that my zipper tab is in here. So I'm gonna have to like reach in and move it, which will prove a little tricky. Yeah, I'm gonna go on either side of this. Not gonna go by measurements. I'm gonna get as close to that edge as I can with my zipper foot. So starting a little ways up here, like right to the top of the zipper tape. Cause once in a while this, this like sticks out and wants to go rogue and do its own thing. So to keep that from happening, we're gonna stitch it down in place, make it our bitch. And then I'm gonna move the needle over a bit actually. Cause like I said, gonna get as close as I can. And we're at a small stitch length. Cool, cool. Let's go. All right. And as I'm going, I'm feeling for the zipper tab, which is right here, the little pull. I'm gonna put my needle down and I'm gonna like 
shimmy it up past the presser foot. And then once we're past the zipper tab, I'm gonna keep a feel for the little end nub. And I'm gonna go like one or two stitches past. Super make sure we're not hitting it here. I'm gonna rotate with the needle down and go across the bottom here. Do a little back tacking. Okay, great. Now lift this up. I'm gonna switch to the other side here. Same thing, start from the top, a little bit above. Feel for where the tab is. Lift the presser foot with the needle down. Get this out of the way. All right, now the zipper tab's out of the way. We can work our way to the bottom. And since we went across the bottom already, we know where these stitches need to stop. So they're gonna meet right there. Did a little back tacking at the end. And now we have a nice little rectangle happening. And guess what, y'all? We have our zipper installed and these fucking lines are matching up. Okay, so now I'm going to pick out these basting stitches that I used to put the zipper in, but then also we're gonna take our handy dandy seam ripper, find that little bottom of the zipper and start unpicking those basting stitches. And it's gonna reveal our little zipper baby. And you can unpick those stitches all the way to the top. Oh my goodness. Also, hey, before you even put the zipper on this skirt, do a little test unzip and rezip and make sure it is gonna work for you. All right, I have managed to fill another memory card. Uh, but it's, it's fine. Pray for editing me, but it's it's gonna be fine. We're going to now fold, th this should be folded in on itself like this from that beautiful pressing job we did. We're gonna, we're gonna get it down like this. Press the waistband so that the facing, so the inside side, you get like a little peak of the front side so that you just get nice crisp edge from the outer edge of the waistband. So let me do that. I'm gonna iron it real quick. And then either before or after ironing this down, I'm going to hand stitch this edge down. You can do it by machine. I always get frustrated with this part. So I'd rather just make it look nice and neat and just hand stitch this down. And then same on this other side. There are two options here and it kind of comes down to whether or not you were able to surge it. And even then there's still some preference here where I don't mind the surged edge being exposed on the inside. That's why I surged it. You can fold this up and tuck it under. Honestly, for me, not worth the fucking headache. So I'm not gonna do that. All right, my dudes, second to last row of stitching that this is all pressed over, laying nice and flat. I'm gonna take a couple pins on the inside of the skirt just to really make sure the gathering stitches are in the right spot. And then we're gonna do a good old stitch in the ditch where you stitch from the front, but I'm gonna go right along the seam. So like just, just next to the end of the fabric here. It's gonna get lost in the gathers. As long as you're doing a matching thread, it's just gonna disappear into the night. Basically treating it like top stitching. If you're having trouble doing that, just go ahead and do top stitching on the edge of the waistband. It's, it's still gonna look nice. And the point of this is to make sure you're catching this flappy boy down here in this row of stitching. I did switch to my clear sewing foot for this cause it's gonna make it easier to keep an eye on things. And yeah, stitching right in this little, little groove here. And I'd rather take my time and go nice and slow than go back and have to unpick stuff and restitch it. Okay, the time has come to hem the skirt. Oh, this is what the stitching in the ditch looks like. You know, not completely hidden because there are a lot of other colors happening. It's not just the gray. It's pretty fucking discreet if I do say so myself. I should try this on and make sure I still like the length. We are not looking too bad here, my friends. I am so excited. Look at that floof. It's, it's a little bit above my knees. I think I want it to end, yeah. It's not like too short then. So we're gonna take this up two inches instead of the one inch I was gonna do. I wasn't sure if I was gonna end up keeping this or putting it in my Etsy, but like I, ha I have to keep this, right? I'm gonna stitch it by hand. I'm gonna listen to Fawn for once. <laughs> gonna stitch it by hand. I'm gonna fold the surged edge over about half an inch and then I'll take that other inch and a half here and then I will hand stitch it to the inside just like that. You guys, it's done and i love it it's the exact perfect length it's not like my butt pokes out if i crouch down oh and like 
Look at how good the hem came out. And yeah, surprise, surprise, it wasn't actually that terrible doing all the hand stitching. It was good to keep myself up during a movie last night. We ended up watching Jaws and then I just finished it outside with the pup after I got home from work today. So yeah, not too bad. The pockets are nice and roomy. And I know this is probably forever long, so I'll keep this end bit short and just say thank you to everyone for watching, for joining the live streams, for commenting, for supporting me on Patreon, for buying stuff from my Etsy shop, for tossing a little tip money my way through coffee. It's all incredible. I wouldn't be here without you, so thank you so much. I'm finishing this up Tuesday night, so I don't know what this weekend's gonna look like for me, but odds are we can fuck with a live stream again. I've been doing um late morning, like real early afternoon, sometime in that brunch zone, you know, but keeping it real casual, so. I will post on my like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter when that's happening. I think sometimes it notifies people that are subscribed slash have the bell on, though not all the time, so who the fuck knows? Either way, I will see you back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out. Because fuck Zyde Zyde Sippers? Cool. <laughs>